Hey guys, so this is a summary of Vesper theory. Um, hopefully you've watched those other videos that I've linked to. Um, that guy with the model showing you um, how to, um, or where this theory comes from. And what I'm going to show you here is um, what you're going to have to do with it, basically, and how to do it. So just to um, um, sort of summarize the, um, the idea of, of Vesper theory, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, is that when you, you have a molecule, um, you look at the central atom, and the electron groups that are on that central atom are all repelling each other. They're pushing each other apart because they all have negative charges. This is just Coulomb's law. Um, and an electron group is either a bond or a lone pair of electrons. And remember that lone, lone pair, lone pair interactions are stronger, push away more strongly than lone pair, bond pair interactions do. And bond, and those push, push away more strongly than bond pair, bond pair interactions do. Um, that's going to help determine the relative bond angles. Um, also, um, a triple bond um, takes up more volume, so it pushes away more strongly than a double bond does, which pushes more strongly than a single bond does. Um, this effect is not as great as this effect right here, but it's still there. So just this right here, guys, this um, is all you really need to understand Vesper theory. Um, this determines the, the shapes of molecules, the three-dimensional shapes. It's really cool. So this table right here is going to be very important for you. So you probably should put this on your card. This is how you apply Vesper theory to answer the kind of questions that you'll, you will be asked to answer. And that is, um, usually it's what is either the molecular geometry or the bond angles in a molecule. Maybe the electron group geometry, um, but mostly the molecular geometry and bond angles. Just to remind you guys, electron group, group geometry is the, the arrangement of all the electron groups, lone pairs and bond pairs combined. And these are, you know, these are just the basic shapes, linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal, um, or octahedral. Um, now the molecular geometry is the shape that's formed by the nuclei. Um, it's, the idea is that while the lone pairs on that central atom certainly have an effect and they're there, we can't see them. And so what we see when we look at a molecule is um, the, the shape, the geometry that the nuclei form. And that's also, by the way, um, the shape that's important in chemistry because the shapes of molecules determine, have a lot to do with their chemistry. Um, and then the bond angles. So we're going to use this table, do a couple examples. Uh, again, really important table, guys. Put this on your card. And so um, you're going to use that table, and we're going to figure out the molecular geometry and bond angles in sulfur dichloride. So why don't you guys give that a shot? Um, come on back when you're done. Welcome back. So um, for, remember, the first thing you need to do is draw the Lewis structure. Um, so this is the Lewis structure for sulfur dichloride. And remembering to minimize formal charges and all those things we learned in um, drawing uh, Lewis structures. And so what we do is when we look at this molecule, we look at the central atom and we see that there are one, two, three, four electron groups. So that puts us over here in this table and it's going to be one of these three rows. Because there are one, two lone pairs on the central atom, that picks out this row right here. Now all we do guys is read the rest of that row and that tells us everything we need to know. The electron group geometry is tetrahedral. There are four electron groups. They form a tetrahedron. Um, the molecular geometry is bent. Um, remember, that means that these two chlorine atoms are being pushed away from this, um, the two lone pairs on here and pushed away more strongly than they push each other away. And so that angle in here, which you can read from here, is less than 109.5 degrees. Remember, if it was a perfect tetrahedron, it would be exactly 109.5 degrees. But because these lone pairs push away these bond pairs, more strongly than these bond pairs push each other away, the angle that's formed um, between these, um, with these three atoms is less than 109.5 degrees. That's the best we can do. We can't say exactly what it is, but that's, that's been the best we can do. All right, so that's that. Let's do another example. Um, so go ahead and draw the Lewis structure, figure out the molecular geometry and bond angles in this molecule. Come on back when you're done. Welcome back. So, <clears throat> 
Lewis structure first, Xenon's central atom. Um, it has um, an expanded octet, which is just fine. Um, and we minimize formal charges. Um, so there's the Lewis structure. So all we do is we look at this Lewis structure, count up the number of electron groups on the central atom. One, two, three, four, five. Remember guys, a double bond or a triple bond still only counts as one electron group here. So we have five electron groups, one, two lone pairs. So all we do is go over to this table, find the row that says five electron groups, two lone pairs. Right here, we're in this row. The electron group geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. The shape, the molecular geometry is T-shaped, and the bond angles are less than 90 and 100, less than 180. So these lone pairs here are on top, pushing away these bond pairs. Um, these bond pairs are being pushed closer than 90 degrees, so the angles here are a little bit less than 90 degrees, whereas the angle on the outside here is going to be a little bit less than 180. That's all there is to it, guys.